Hey there, YouTube friends. Mass Bandit here with another episode of Conifer Slopes. We are now into episode 13 of Conifer Slopes. Wait, is it 13? Yeah, I think, I think so. This is probably episode 13 of Conifer Slopes. Real professional show we got running here. <laughs> and we are going to continue working over on the uh, the new wharf section. Still putting together the list of names that I'm going to need your help on. There's a couple there that I really, really like. Thanks for all the input in the previous video. Really appreciate that. Um, one of those will probably be the name of the wharf, and I might need your help in a poll or a vote or something like that. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, and so I guess I don't have much else to say. We're actually going to make some buildings today. So yeah, we're going to start to nail down the idea of what the theme is going to look like and what the uh, architecture is going to be. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the time lapse, and I will see you guys on the other side of this cut. It's time lapse time and today we're going to start with working on the brick building which is going to be the brewery of the wharf and it is inspired by an area in Newport Rhode Island called Bowen's Wharf if you do a Google search for Bowen's Wharf you'll see a building that looks eerily similar to this and so yeah that's what we're doing here it looked really cool and I think an old brick building would work really well for a brewery and if you don't know yet, I am a connoisseur of craft beer, and so I kind of need to have, <laughs> I kind of need to have a brewery and kind of for slopes for myself, for myself, and maybe for Ruble, because, and Commando Santa, and Adfo. Okay, there's a whole bunch of people that I talk to that are big into beer, like I am. So this is all for them. Shout out to my peeps, yo. Uh, you notice at the beginning of, <laughs> so lame. You notice at the beginning of the video, I was using the rough brick, and I like the texture better, but there was no, um, there was no, uh, concrete pillar, there was no pillar, no, uh, no pillar of the brick that I needed, so I ended up switching back to the classic brick, and that worked just fine. Uh, trying the spooky roofs, spooky roofs didn't do it for me, I I'll use them in other places, but I wanted just the standard shingled roof for this, for this building, and it's Pretty straightforward. The brick architecture, uh, the architecture on this brick building, looking at the reference images, is really, really kind of just simple. There's not a lot to it, and and I actually think that's going to work really, really well for <laughs> for slopes. The less parts, the better. But I don't want it to look boring or bland. So this was a great building to throw into the into the wharf area, and it also kind of helps solidify it. it. It's this old kind of colonial colonial look to it. The thing I noticed is even though it's like two stories, how short the building appears. So maybe these are just really, really small. I don't know. Like uh, when my wife and I were searching for a house, we looked at an old um, colonial, I guess, and, and, and it was very compartmentalized and very low ceilings. So maybe that's just a style of older buildings like this. So dressing up the columns now the little pillars and and it went with art shapes just because the planks looked kind of funky having them having them stacked like that so and then that's already kind of just the i wanted to get the general shape the backs of the buildings are not completed um hell the sides aren't even completed in most cases i just wanted to get a general idea of the facades here so uh, after this main structure we're going to add a smaller kind of extension i suppose and again, real similar in its simplicity to what is attached to. I mean, that makes sense, right? So there are three buildings in this time lapse today. Oh, there's the beginning of number two. I wanted to kind of space them out. And uh, man, the spooky, uh, this spooky haunted house wall set. Oh my gosh, this older looking clapboard. It's fantastic. I think it might be my new favorite. And it's going to be just, just thrown everywhere in the wharf area. There is so much tinkering I do with this building just to kind of get it in scale with the building next to it. It's supposed to be taller, but it's not supposed to be just overshadowing the first building. And I think, like you'll see, it takes a long time to get it where I want it, but I, I think it, it, it really helps complement that other building well. 
Um, this is really a kind of a true facade, just like a row of, of these of these buildings. But anyway, as I was saying, we're gonna have three buildings, and these two are modeled off of Bones Wharf. And the third one is actually a suggestion from, from Wings and Strings, who is currently working on our Bro Coaster episode 31. And OMG, you guys, in two weeks, you are gonna be absolutely blown away. Trust me, it's incredible what he's doing to the park. But uh, he suggested to look up model tech because, uh, you know, I use the uh, I use the train model stuff for my little gift shop in No Name Landia. And so I went back to model train stuff and they had this model tech company has this awesome wharf kit. And so the third building we build um, is modeled off of an actual model train set so yeah one of the issues i ran into here is actually this is more like a story and a half as opposed to a true two story so i had to get those idiot i had to use the small i had to use some really small windows i wanted the top and bottom windows to match but it just didn't happen a couple custom awnings here uh, i like this dark blue color i think it's kind of i think it's kind of spiffy uh, i'm not sure about these awnings if they are um convincing I wanted to put a logo of some kind on them, but it just, you'll see, I, I attempt it, and it just, yeah, they're just too big. So I go ahead and I slap the name of the uh, brewery, and I think I call it Open Net Brewing Company. I, if it's a war fishing nets, open nets, I, I don't know, I, I think it works. I think it works fine. What I'm actually going to do is steal the Bandit IPA sign that I built for the Hophead Brewery in No Name Landia, and I'm going to slap it on the side of this building, and we're going to say that Open Net Brewing actually brews Bandit IPA and then ships it to other parks or something like that. I don't know. I don't know if that's even feasible or realistic, but that's what we're going with for my story. That's my story, and I'm um, sticking to it. Uh, one thing I actually didn't finish... Um, for this episode is this area here with the black fence. It's just kind of weird in there, but this is a huge, huge um, plaza area, and I wanted to section off some seating. Uh, I think we're gonna go ahead, uh, this is gonna drop on Monday, a couple days before update 1.4, the big anniversary update, that's gonna have all them picnic tables in it, and I'm hoping they work the way everyone expects them to work, and who knows? <laughs> but uh, that little, fenced off section is going to be an outdoor patio and we're going to try and incorporate those new picnic benches we're also going to try and incorporate the curbs i think that's what they're called to kind of help direct traffic flow rather than using the little uh, barrel planters i haven't used any and you've noticed I've, i'm building right on top of the paths this is all in preparation for the new update and we're going to test it and see how it works once we let people in here so uh, removing the bottom layer to this extension to this building and going to put in a little bit more modern looking entrance area. This is going to be a gift shop. And I wanted a big window, but this one just felt, it just felt too big. So we, we, we yeah, we scrapped that and we go with something a little more modest that actually I think ends up working better. I was a little kind of uh, about this color scheme at first, the teal and the like, like saturated pinkish reddish but I think this is for, straight from a photo I was like if it works in real life it'll work in uh, kind of for slopes and I actually do enjoy it a lot so these glass walls here I, I'm not sure how much I like them I think I need some trim down on the bottom of them I, I think that would really help and here we're gonna go ahead and have some open doors, which means I will have to do a small interior for this store. I did not do that for this episode. We will save that for another day. I wanted to just flesh out as much of the open of, a, of this plaza here as I could. This is kind of like right in the center of the wharf, so I wanted it to house a couple really giant, you know, larger structures to kind of be the focal point of the area. And then the other stuff might be smaller, so we'll see. I'm kind of just winging it here. I don't have any major grand plans for where I want the buildings, but I have ideas of what I want the buildings to look like. So might be a bit of mixing and matching and stuff like that. So I call this shiny things. I think that's pretty funny. And actually you could tie this into like underwater stuff too. My daughter, she's almost four. She's big into Moana and there's this crab. I forget what his name is. And it collects gold and shiny things. And he has a song called shiny. And if you're familiar with the comedy group Flight of the Concords, Jermaine is one of the singers in that group. 
and he is also the voice of the crab from the movie Moana. So I love Flight of the Concords. I actually was lucky enough to go and see them live. So <laughs> uh, I'm a big fan of them. So this is like, I guess, a little, uh, a, a, a gentle nod to Flight of the Concords uh, with the shiny things. A really back road taking a long time to get there. So. I'm actually really proud of these little windows that you're seeing going in right now because in the in the reference image they have where the, the the top opens up and so I think that turned out really nice. I really dig the way that looks. I might go back and put some beams in to act like supports but I don't think we'd necessarily need it. Uh, I don't know. So once this building is up it's like okay what is this going to be? What is this going to be? And it's going to be a, I guess another restaurant um, maybe I'm not sure. Like it's too big just to be nothing. So, but you'll see, we start working on a custom sign in a few minutes here after I uh, fight with this roof a bit. Uh, I ended up flattening the little dormers out there a bit. Yeah, see, I flattened it out a bit and just to make it fit because that's a pretty steep, that's four height roof pieces and those are pretty steep. It's hard to nest things into them. So I wanted it to be high enough to get some windows and obviously there I, I did. And again, this is pretty simple too, even though it's like model railroad stuff, it's it's not like this wharf style isn't, it's not fancy. It's not meant to be fancy. It's meant to be more, uh, more industrial and just more, uh, you know, performance, not necessarily pretty, but I think it's pretty, so. And now a hard cut to the custom sign. Uh, we are making a tuna fish. <laughs> I found a goofy picture of a tuna fish and I said, I can make that. And so this is the tried and true method that I've been doing for science for a while now, where you use the um, triangle flat pieces and you turn it on its edge. So only the edge is poking through and you kind of outline, you draw your shape. It's really good for like cartoon images. And so that's why a lot of my logos have actually just kind of been cartoons. They haven't been, um, I guess, more realistic, but that's a good way to start. You shape the image, you know, you, you, you kind of outline your image and go from there. I thought this eyeball ended up to be pretty clever. I, I like the way it turned out with the different pieces. The only thing is using the cone. Uh, you'll see in a second here, I use a cone for the highlight of the eye. I'm not digging that from pro from the side view. It looks kind of bogus, but I don't know if there's anything better I can use. I might have to try and finagle a piece to work in there. So, and once the outline of the body is done, it's time to add gills and fins, and it's 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 fish. It's fish. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't know what there is to say about it other than watch me make a fish out of heart shapes. <laughs> So I'm actually going to let the tunes kick up, and I might have a couple things to say about it when we get into coloring it, but for now, just sit back and enjoy this little fish come together. I'll be back in a minute. After I do the dorsal fin there uh, and I start working on the tail, I end up getting a crash. Uh, I, it's not really a crash. I have this weird thing. It's, it's like a ram freeze. It's when I highlight too many pieces and go into a advanced move. It, the, it doesn't like that. And the whole game will just seize. And I can move the cursor, but I can't click on anything. Nothing moves. I can't do anything. And I was, I was horrified because I'd gotten this far and I thought for sure I was doomed. But um, the autosave actually kicked in and caught everything except for the tail fin. So I was super fortunate to not lose a bunch. I would have I cried. So here we are just kind of coloring in the, uh, the, the tuna. And a large portion of this tuna is actually white, which is, I think, really made it a lot easier to, to kind of to kind of do. I didn't have to color in most of it. And that also really, really saved on the part counts. So now after I've drawn the fish, watch me color in the fish. And actually that's about it. After I color in the fish, I plop it on the building and add a little bit of clutter. And that's it for episode 13. It was really about nailing the general vibe of the area. And with these three buildings, 
you're gonna you can kind of get a, a sense of where we're headed with the rest of this wharf area far far departure from the original uh, Jonathan Lake so uh, yeah I'm just gonna let this roll again and we will finish this tuna and put it on the building and then that'll be it so uh, thanks so much for being here and for checking out the video uh, be sure to subscribe if you haven't and hit like if you want to see more conifer soaps on the channel uh, I'm having a blast as always and your likes and your comments and your subscriptions really mean a lot and they help out the channel a lot So thanks so much if you've already done that and enough talking from me Have a great rest of your day great night great whatever and I will see you for the next episode of conifer soaps Bye-bye